Hi, I'm Molly Bedell. I'm the Nature-Based Solutions Manager at Hampton Estate. And today we are here in the Queen Elizabeth's Woodland, which is a newly planted woodland on Hampton Estate. We're in the Surrey Hills AOMB and we're on the western side of the county. Hi, my name's Georgina Terry. I'm the ecologist at Natural England and I'm involved in the Tree Action Plan delivery. Hi, my name's Emma Bramley. I look after the team who goes out and talks to landowners, land managers and farmers about woodland creation at the Forestry Commission. Because this is quite a complex and very important landscape, we really needed the help of advisors um, to bring the project together. So as the land manager, we were able to call on help from the likes of the Forestry Commission, Natural England, etc., the Surrey Hills AOMB, in order to pull it all together and actually get this project to fruition. So bringing all these stakeholders together, working together, sharing knowledge has been really, really important. Hampton Estate is about 2,000 acres and we are very fortunate because we have an incredibly interesting mosaic of habitat types. The whole of the estate is slap bang in the middle of a bee line, which makes it very important for pollination. Um, and the chalk ridge that we're on here is the beginning of the estate and then it flows through into heathland and sandy, sandy woodland and acid grassland. So making sure that this top northern part of the estate is ecologically as resilient as possible is really, really important. And we brought that into our design of the woodland, thinking about the species, thinking about how we can make sure we're looking after indicator species and how that merges in with the chalk downland itself. The chalk downland, we are doing a downland restoration project across that as well. So we're removing moving scrub, working with the likes of butterfly conservation to make sure we're protecting important habitat, uh, species and habitat on the habitat. So um, there's lots going on on this site and it's been a really interesting exercise in how you create a new woodland as ecologically sensitively as possible. Um, again, we wouldn't have been able to do that without everyone else's advice and help and hand-holding. Um, the other thing that was really important to us in creating this woodland was thinking about climate resilience. So we're in a very dry area of the southeast of England. It's only going to get drier. Um, so we really wanted to think about our species composition in this woodland and think about what would be resilient in 30, 40, 50 years time. Um, so we've brought some quite interesting species in. So the key reasons why we wanted to plant this new woodland here was um, firstly, for habitat purposes and for the benefits that it was going to provide in terms of creating a noise pollution and air pollution barrier from the road. Um, also because we thought a native woodland with some interesting climate resilient species would just look beautiful here. But really important to us was the people. So we're in a very crowded corner of southeast Surrey. We have so many people living around us, which is amazing. Um, that means that we want to create green spaces that they can access that provide lots and lots of benefits to them, whether that's uh, recreational access to get out and stay well, benefits for mental health, um, ability to see beautiful views and landscape like we've got here. It's really, really important. So we were thrilled that we could put in a new footpath um, and some really beautiful benches made out of timber from the farm. And the great news is lots of people are already really enjoying the footpath um, and it links up with existing footpaths as well. So that's worked really well and combines for this holistic idea of what a good woodland should look like um, providing benefit to people and the planet. So that's really, really important. Finally, the other reason why we wanted to plant was, as I've said, climate resilience, but also carbon sequestration. So the fact that we can layer in potential woodland carbon code income through the sale of woodland carbon credits in the future was a real nudge factor in enabling us to make the financial case for actually planting the woodland. Um, so layering in UCO, the England Woodland Creation offer, and the carbon Woodland Carbon Code potential of selling carbon credits is really important and something that hopefully in the next 10 to 30 years we will be looking at selling those carbon credits. Any change you make to the landscape, even if it's a really exciting one, like creating a new woodland, um, needs to fit with what all the people that are living in this landscape want. And we, we needed to make sure that our local communities were on board and in agreement that this was a good idea. So um, with the help of Kevin, our forestry agent, we um, did a really a lengthy process of public engagement and we spoke to all our neighbours and got some feedback and actually the feedback that we um, 
gathered from the local community did end up meaning that we changed our planting plans slightly and it's brought so many stakeholders together so obviously the likes of professionals our ecologists natural england forestry commission kevin our forestry consultant and then bringing in that element of public engagement as well to make sure that the people that are living in the area um, get what they want from the woodland and then finally we were able to plant some trees so it's very exciting to be standing here with the trees in the ground so the estate brought me in from Natural England's perspective to look at the planting plan. The design was very important to them, but you have to take into consideration what it is that you're standing on. Underneath our feet, we've got chalky soils. Some of those are really deep. So for example, at the bottom of the hill where I'm standing now, we've got very deep soils. At the top over the crest of the hill, we've got some deep soils as well. But in between that, we've got this whole strip of what I would call very thin, quite poor calcareous soil and because trees don't generally like to grow there, what else could we do with that? And actually the clues were where we were standing. There were lots of wildflowers that you might consider indicators of good quality chalk grassland. Those things that might include um, cowslips, we saw wild basil, which is still here, really good for the bees. Um, so actually it wasn't necessarily the right place to put wall to wall woodland and part of the project um, that the estate were looking to do was to maximise nature recovery. So it wasn't just about trees, it was also about carbon, it was also about wildlife. And being on the bee line along the North Downs, it's important to manage that land for bees as well. So the estate can also, now they've got trees in the ground, they're able to manage the downland um, as part of that restoration project with their cows um, to graze to make sure that the wildflowers can thrive as well as the trees at the bottom of the hill and the top of the hill. So those smaller things that we saw on site gave us an indication that we could actually manage the downland as a whole. So there is a larger area of downland that runs from the east to the west. That's part of the landscape that, as we're sitting on the North Downs. Uh, so we've got trees at the bottom of the hill, the right species of trees to cope with the chalky soils. We've got wildflowers in the middle, which are fantastic for the bees. And then we've got trees at the top of the hill, which are an amazing buffer to the main road and also sequestering carbon and beautiful views for people to enjoy. So after we finished with the survey on the site, it was really important to go back with those findings to make sure the estate were happy with what the choices might be to change the design, but also to make sure that we can benefit the downland by perhaps applying one of our grant schemes so that they can manage it uh, ongoing with their animals and to make sure that they have everything they need to in place to carry on with sympathetically managing the grassland. Um, but also to go back and look at the choice of species of trees that they were going to plant to make sure they're putting the correct species in the ground. And in order to have that discussion with the Forestry Commission and the Forestry Agent to make sure that everybody is happy with the design going forward so that we get the best of both worlds, some woodland creation and some downland restoration. When we first visited the site as Forestry Commission, we realised that there were some really special characteristics to this location that Hampton wanted to plant. So we sought the advice of uh, the Forestry Commission advisors and the ecologists, and we invited the Natural England advisor as well to make sure that there was a good project overall for the whole mosaic of habitats. Part of the first visit and looking at the maps for the site, we noticed that there was ancient woodland in other parts of the estate and bordering the project site. And we're really pleased to see that that has remained in the final design that came from the forestry agent. As part of the project, we're really pleased to see that the ancient woodland that already exists on the site and around the woodland creation project area um, was able to be linked together and connected through the new planting that was put in place and that was maintained throughout the design and came out even at the end of the process. We also were really glad that the buffering of the A road was still included in the final design and we were pleased that the people were still invited onto the um, woodland through a permissive path to see the views of the landscape of the Surrey Hills that Hampton enjoys um, and to see the mosaic habitats and the restoration of the chalk downland. So we were pleased to offer Hampton the support and advice from Forestry Commission experts as well as them drawing in 
other specialists for soil sampling um, and to make sure that the right tree was going in the right place. I think what I've loved about being part of this is the people that have been involved and Hampton have been really welcoming to perspectives and to getting advice um, and specialists involved and also opening that up to the community and the neighbours um, of the estate. So I think if we're going to give some advice to anyone thinking about woodland creation, the tip is to get people involved because that's how you progress the change and also take into account perspectives and make the best possible use of the land for both people and for nature. If you are a land manager and you are thinking about creating a new woodland, that is awesome. Um, a few, few pointers to help. I would say firstly, think about the landscape that you're in and think about the context of that landscape. We need to make sure that the right trees are being planted in the right places. Secondly, it takes time, so don't expect it to happen overnight. You need to have patience, but it will work. And thirdly, make sure you surround yourself with brilliant people who can help you. There are so many fantastic people out there, ecologists, woodland advisors, forestry consultants, who can help you with understanding what the right type of woodland in your area should and could look like. Um, and finally, enjoy it because it's a very exciting process and it's great to get trees in the ground.